Hello everyone, it's Aaron Brimer with Veritas Farm Business Management. This video is designed to answer a question that we get on a regular basis at Veritas, and that is, is precision ag right for my farm? To answer this question, we need to look at what we consider to be the backbone of precision ag at Veritas. Now, most people in the industry are gonna tell you it's all about data. And although data plays an important part, Let's face it, Veritas is dedicated to looking at data, analyzing data, and creating insights from data. However, we don't believe data is the true backbone of precision egg. It's important, but the big question that we have to answer is this, variability. Do you have enough variability on your farm that precision egg technology and the concept of precision egg is going to make sense. So this video, we're going to talk about a tool that we've built to be able to answer that question. How much variability do you have? And is it enough that you're going to have to consider precision egg to truly get the most out of your production system? So with that in mind, most people in the precision egg space are going to tell you the most important layer, the layer to get things started, is a good soil test layer. So let's talk about soil tests. There's a whole bunch of different systems out there. We're not going to go over all of them, but we're going to go over some of them and how uh, Veritas looks at these different systems in order to be able to determine how much variability is actually there. So the basic approach on soil sampling is what's called bulk sampling. In Ontario, this is one sample every 25 acres. I know in Western Canada, it's very common to do one sample for every 160 acres. Really doesn't matter what your scale is that you're using. What bulk sampling is doing is uh, taking the field and sampling in very large sections. And the samples are um, collected, uh, mixed together, and sent off to the lab. It gives you a good idea as the baseline of what's going on in your field. But it doesn't do a whole lot for capturing variability. You can see the example I've given here. Uh, above is a 40 acre field split into two uh, samples. Below it, in case you uh, want to have a li little better understanding as to what's going on, is an imaginary 100 acre field. And we've split it into four different samples. You can see towards the north end, the top part of that uh, uh, imaginary field, there's two samples. Uh, the east and west that are a little lighter in color, so maybe not as much organic matter, maybe a little bit sandier. Whereas further to the south, the bottom, on both the east and west, things are a little bit darker. So that has been the standard for uh, soil sampling. In fact, in Ontario, one sample every 25 acres is considered the best management practice. Starting in the, I'm going to say the early uh, 1990s, we started to do grid sampling. And what grid sampling is, is basically subdividing the field into uh, smaller samples, and then each spot is sampled separately. The data comes back from the soil lab, and there is software that takes all of this data and attempts to interpret it and overlay what the software, what the computer thinks your field's going to behave. So this is called grid sampling, and there's some variations, and you can have different sizes of, of grids. The next step up, and this has become a little bit more common, is zone sampling. Now what zone sampling does is instead of taking those samples every two and a half acres, it takes the samples based on predefined zones, maybe based off of yield, maybe based off of imagery, whatever the case may be, and those zones are then sampled. Now sometimes you uh, combine the zones, so you can have a whole bunch of hilltops all combined into one, or you might soil sample those hills separately. It completely depends on how intensive those uh, zones are going to be. When you take all of that data, you plug it in, you can see our imaginary 100 acre field. We're starting to see a little bit more detail than what we did with the grid or the bulk. That's not always true, but in this case it is. The most recent, and you're probably starting to recognize a picture at the bottom, but the most recent soil sampling uh, system is the uh, um, soil sensing. There's a bunch of different systems uh, on the market. Uh, you have soil optics, you have SIS from Trimble, 
you have Varus, you have Swatbox. There is a lot of different systems out there. And they do an incredible job of capturing detail. To the point where you can start to see my imaginary 100 acre field at the bottom probably looks very familiar. So when you look at the total amount of variability of that field, you can see each system captures a different amount of variability. That doesn't mean that one is necessarily better than the other, depending on what you want to do with it and how much that variability is going to impact you. So the question we get, yes, I have some variability in my field, or I don't think I have that much variability in my field. I don't think it's going to pay. I don't want to make that investment. Help me understand if I should make that investment. And that's what the rest of this video is about, because we're going to show you a product that, well, maybe not a product, a tool that we have built to be able to capture that amount of variability. So we're going to start with this field. This field, the picture on your left, the red to green image, is a field that has a lot of variability. So that variability can be from an image, it can be from um, intensive soil scanning, it can be from yield. What it is, is it just shows you the total amount of variability in that field. The graph, I call it a graph, my data scientist is probably going to uh, dispute whether that's a graph, she's probably gonna tell you that it's a histogram. What that shows is the distribution of the different data points. So how far apart are they? So you can see you've got data points that are running from a number of, of five all the way up to 20. So you have a significant variation and you can see there's uh, different peaks across the field. So you, the closer that those peaks are together or combined into one, the less variable you are. The more spread out it is, the more individual peaks, the more variable it is. So what? What does it mean to your field? Well, what we did was we took that total variability and we, and it's about a hundred acre field in this case, and we split it out using that Ontario best management practice concept of one sample every 25 acres. And then we gridded it or averaged by polygon. And what you can see is when you do that and you measure the amount of variability. So basically what you're doing is you're comparing the uh, um, histogram of the total variability to the histogram on the 25 acre uh, um, sampling. And when you do that, you capture 19% of that variability. I told you, this field has a nice bit of variability. As a farmer, I would not be happy capturing only 19% of the variability. So what else can we do? Well, we could go to a 10 acre uh, grid approach. And you can see we're capturing a little bit more of the variability. In fact, we're capturing up to 45%. Like I said, this is a grid approach. So you maybe you say, you know what? I want to use a 10 acre zone. What does that do for me? Well, in this case, you can see the grids are a lot different than the zones. There's your zones, there's your grids. Back to your zones. But in both cases, you're capturing 45% of the variability. It's a different 45%, I'll give you that. But in both cases, you're capturing 45% variability. So maybe you're going to say, you know what, 45%, I'm not uh, convinced that that is enough variability to capture for this field. I want to capture more. All right, let's go to that five acre grid. Wow, we've just gone from 45% to 80% by going from that 10 acre, um, whether it was grid or zones, to a five acre grid. You've captured 80% of the variability. That's pretty impressive. Now, you could also do it a five acre zones. Once again, 74%. So you've dropped a little bit of that variability by going to the zones. And that's just because of how the zones are made. Depending on how you make your zones, you might be able to capture more of that variability. That's the cool part about this tool is you can start figuring out what is the best way to make money on your farm or invest to, on soil sampling. Do you want to soil sample every 25 acres? Do you want to soil sample every five acres? Do you want to use grids? Or do you want to use uh, polygons slash uh, zones? This is a really cool tool. You can send us your field boundary and we can start doing this with your yield data or with imagery even before you make that investment on soil sampling. So before you make that investment, you can decide how much variability you want to capture. Now, if you
you want to spend a little bit more money, you can go up to the two and a half acre grid. That's going to give you a little bit more uh, variability capture. You can need it up to 81%. But like I said, obviously twice as many soil samples, the price starts to go up. So it depends on your operation and how much variability you want to capture. If you were comfortable with capturing only 19% of that variability, perfect. Go with the bulk soil sampling. If you want to capture a little bit more, you can start to become a little bit more intensive. So there's our two and a half acre grid, our two and a half acre zones. So these zones were obviously uh, drawn a little bit better than our five acre zones, but we only captured an additional 1% of that variability. Still not a whole lot of uh, difference between the two. Now, the cool part about a two and a half acre grid and two and a half acre zone, they're probably going to be about the same price. But if our two and a half acre zones had been more accurate, then maybe we would have been up to uh, the high 80s and you say, hey, that's the one I want to go with. It's completely up to you. That's the cool part about this tool. Your fields, your variability, you get to decide how you want to capture it. Or if you want to, don't want to capture it at all. If it is super uniform field, run it through this tool and it might come back that bulk soil sampling catches 80% of the variability. All right, then if that's the case, why do a precision egg? That would be my question to you. So that's a pretty cool thing. Now, if you really want to spend, start spending some money, you can get intensive and you can go to the one, uh, one acre grid. That's going to capture 91% in a grid. And in the zones, like I said, the zones are maybe not as good as uh, could be. You're at 85%. Here's my thoughts. If you want this level of variability captured, it's time to start investing in that uh, soil scanning sampling net technology whether it be soil optics or SWAT box or Varus or any other system like SIS from Trimble, whatever your system wants to be, because that's going to be a little bit more expensive. So now when you want to be a little bit more expensive, you can take advantage of that for your farm. But like I said, maybe you don't want to invest to the highest level. Maybe you want to be a little less expensive. That's the cool thing about this variability capture tool. You can decide how much variability you want to uh, capture in your farm. And then you can make smarter decisions on how precision ag works for you. If you don't have that much variability, don't go precision ag. But if the, your answer to should precision ag work for my farm and is you don't know how much variability you've got on your farm or how you're going to be able to capture it, what a cool way to uh, investigate to determine if it's the right decision for you or not. If you have this type of information, you can make better decisions on where you want to invest on your farm. Thank you very much for listening. Hopefully you'll check out a few more of our videos.